This is an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. Well, I hope you guys enjoy season two. I hope you enjoy hearing from the guests that we've got and some of the topics that we cover. But yeah, keep sharing. Keep telling us what you like, what you don't like. And share it with your mum. We think your mum would like our banter. Welcome back to season two of the Tread Lightly podcast. If you thought season one was just about recycling, hugging trees, think again, because this time we're taking things up a notch, talking about everything from how community shapes our planet to why faith might just have something to say about the environment and even digging into the quirks of human behaviour. I think we all realise quite quickly that the environmental conversation is way too big to keep simple. So we're diving in headfirst at the deep end. Buckle in, because this season we're going to get real. Let's go. Let's do this. Welcome back. It's season two, Kaylee. Oh, my life. How have you been over the break? I mean, I've been all right, to be honest. It feels long doesn't it? Season two has been in the making for months and months and months. So thank you for everyone's patience who who we've spoken to. Because we had a blooming election in the middle, didn't we? I was we? just about <laughs> to say, we were doing so well in our planning, in our prepping. And then this guy called Rishi comes on the telly and was like, just so you know, 4th of July is going to be a general election. Yeah. And we were like, no, 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 we're planning that for an election series in yeah. October. We thought we had so much time and then we did a big old big massive rush but we managed to do it didn't it we was I'm so, so proud of us it was such an interesting I mean it's probably quite good that it forced our hand quite quickly but really interesting there was loads and loads of commentary from environmental organisations saying the environment is a missing piece of people's manifestos broadly yeah. and especially in the kind of political coverage and the build up to the election we're really saying the environment just doesn't really feature so I think it was really really nice to be able to invite the four main parties along to come and have a chat with us and actually just discuss how the kind of more general policies that are being spoken about how that makes sense under a political microscope I guess and I did learn a whole load of stuff doing that political series did you I really did and I really really enjoyed it as well I think one of my reflections of it is that actually of the three parties that turned out what was really interesting was there was actually more that united them then divided them. Yeah, well, I come away thinking that. It came away, I came away thinking that the three of them could actually work together. Do you know what I mean? I completely agree with you. And and I've also had feedback for people that have listened to those episodes that said that. Going, really? imagine if those Just got their heads together and was like, right, the table. let's just, yeah, let's just crack on with this. Which, I mean, I, I don't much about what's going on since then, but I think that's worth, yeah, putting out there. Interesting. But anyway, the um, series one, that was fun. I feel like it was a long, for our first one, we didn't quite know what we were doing. And uh, we had so many um, supportive people that was kind of holding our hands along the way, wasn't there? So I feel like it was good. It was a good, um, it was a good time. I think some of the conversations I'm really, really grateful for having. One of the conversations I particularly remember with you, this wasn't one of the ones with a guest, was around environmental classism. Well, that one makes me cringe when I go back and look at that now. Do you not like it? No. I, found I think it, I've learned so much more since then. I found it really interesting, though, because I didn't even know that that word existed. Yeah. And so having yeah. a conversation around how... Um, yeah, kind of how that happens, how and kind of class divides people and makes it so much more challenging for certain people to kind of enter into the environmental space. I quite like those more difficult conversations. Yeah, I mean, I I think what uh, the feedback that I've got from those particular ones were how um, vulnerable we were in kind of like opening up a conversation, putting it on a podcast where we don't have extensive knowledge and kind of like understanding of. And I didn't know how to take that first, which makes me that's where my comment comes of like, oh, it makes me cringe a little bit. But actually, when we then like went into a conversation about it, it was like, actually, it was a real positive because people are sitting there waiting to be perfect and to know and have all of these answers before they start having these conversations in an open space. And I think one of the best things about us is we just open a mouth, have a conversation without kind of having some sort of like answer or this is what you need to be doing because no one's fully got that right yeah but just opening it up and having that conversation outward and and it's kind of like giving other people opportunities to have those conversations locally which has been quite a bit of a game changer really for us 
I think you're right. And I think taking that kind of elitism away from a conversation which is really, really complicated and really complex and just letting it be okay. I guess the same with politics, isn't it? Like the, the everyday person can have a conversation about politics and about the environment and you don't need to wait until you are you know, the expert on question time or the expert in the in the field to be able to have an opinion on it. Mm. I, re- I really enjoyed that element of yeah. it. Was there any guests in particular in series one that stood out for you or you particularly enjoyed chatting to? Oh my gosh, there's so many, isn't there? I think for me... One of my favourites is probably Leon. I think we broke him quite early on. You say that quite a lot, (laughs) don't you? I think we broke Leon. But I think that was probably one of my favourites because he's really knowledgeable about his subject and his passion. He explains it in such a way that I can understand and I think other people can understand. This is wildlife friendly gardening. Yeah. And... I think also he has such a gentle manner about him in that he's not, (laughs) I was going to say, not like me and all like, all really excited and like really sort of, you know, just really just unassuming, isn't he? Just kind of like, I think he's a, um, he's a problem solver as well. He's quite a, he takes action in the sense that if you only have this available to you, this is what you can yeah. do. And if you've only got this available, this is what you can do. Yeah. Even to the point that I see him sometimes posting on social media and sometimes he'll say, you know, somebody complains about litter. And so he posts the the site on Medway Council where you can report fly tipping, overflowing bins or high density litter. So he's not necessarily always saying, I need you to go out and collect that or that you've got any kind of solution. You know, he's always got a solution that, even if you say no, I can't. I can't go out and collect it. Or a you can report it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. like never just sitting and moaning. Always finding what the answer yeah. is. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I think that's probably one of mine. What what's yours? I think it has to be Bella. I've listened back to that episode about three times. Bella um, Sabin Doors from um, Kent Wildlife Trust. Yeah, an insanely clever, articulate, generous, sensitive. I don't even know. However to describe her she's an incredible young woman who's going to do incredible things and she I think she's been promoted since but she looked after kind of the health and well-being side of um, people who are involved with Kent Wildlife Trust and did her dissertation at uni on health um, climate anxiety yeah insanely fascinating woman. I learned loads from that episode. I did and I think it was probably one of the first guests that we had and I remember I remember sitting there thinking she is, I mean, she knows her stuff, doesn't she? Yeah. But not only does she know her stuff, she obviously learned it, she's done her dissertation, you know, so I don't like judge me on this, but like some am- academics, it's all great in a book. Do you know what I mean? Really good at reading, being able to like regurgitate that yeah. out, back out. But she's practically practicing the stuff that she's learn in such a positive way with Kent Wildlife Trust I just looked at her and was like you've you've got one of my dream jobs yeah hasn't she though Mm. she's a smart cookie she's gonna go far but I think leaving in her legacy as she moves up through her career is going to be some really interesting stuff that's going to help people who feel so helpless and not able to access these conversations because it's so big and scary and terrifying and Mm. over there massive and she just kind of brings it down to like how you can kind of calm yourself, settle yourself, but take action so that you kind of do feel empowered. She's a um, she's a smart cookie. Yeah. What about the um, Jackie Weaver? Jackie Weaver. <laughs> Jackie Weaver. Again, what a woman. Isn't she? I thought I was going to love her and I loved her even more. Yeah. I, I think I loved her directness. Like, I love it when people are just like know this she did it with such i don't know what the word is like oh, she's just so wise yeah. and very respectful wasn't she yeah she was just able to like disagree with some stuff but just in like no this is what i believe this is why i believe it and just did it in a really respectful way and i i think i don't know if i was expecting her to be a bit more like playing up to the kind of jackie we see what you mean yeah do you know what i mean but like, she is that but character that, that is, is her isn't that it that is her yeah and i and i thought yeah fair play to her actually i really enjoyed her um she talked directly to you at one point 
So I, th- I can't remember exactly what you said, but it was something along the lines of like, oh, you know, old little old me showing up and saying this at the council. And she was like, no, take a minute, because actually you you were kind of describing that your answers are really simple and not very academic. And she was like, just hold a minute in, in yourself that actually your ability to see things very simply is actually a gift rather than as women, I think we tend to find all our shortcomings and all the things we can't do rather than recognising the things that we can be in a gift that perhaps somebody who's very academic or bureaucratic actually can't do that. And I really like that because I think where we have been invited to be part of kind of um, conversations at council level now, which has been great and we've been asked to speak at things and we always go, oh, we're not the experts. We just kind of a bit anxious and busy and we just kind of want to talk about it because it matters to us. And she was still able to reflect that there's a place for that. Because if we wait for the academics and the bureaucrats to, to kind of come up with the answers, we're waiting forever and potentially not necessarily talking and engaging with people. So I really liked her helping you and us have that conversation around how everybody has a place at the table and yeah. a reason to be having this conversation. I think she is a perfect example of standing the authority that you've been given. Yeah. And I think that is that is an example. An example of somebody that does that and does that well. She empowers other people, doesn't yeah. she? And I think if I was to aspire to anything, I think I put her, she doesn't put herself in the same category. So it is my own. But I put her in the same category as like, um, do you know Miriam Margulies? I love Miriam Margulies. So like I wonder Miriam if she does Margulies put herself in that category. And kind of Dawn French, you know, those kind of people that just go, you know, I've been given this authority, I'm just going to be here. I love it. Are you tired of the same old chat about saving the planet? You know, like the reduce, reuse, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's time to shake things up because season two of the Tread Lightly podcast is here and we're diving deeper than your recycling bin. This season, we're talking about community, faith, and yes, even why humans behave so weirdly sometimes when it comes to conversations about the environment. Oh my gosh, they do. But there's no boring lectures here. So just real talk, tough questions and a little bit of banter along the way because let's face it we all need to lighten up when we're trying to save the planet right so if you're ready to stop tiptoeing around some of the big environmental stuff get real and join the conversations come tread lightly with us catch season two of the tread lightly podcast available wherever you get your podcasts like uh now We've got season two coming out, which is really exciting. We've got some really, really lovely guests that we've interviewed and and learned a whole load more from like community stuff. We've done a little bit more faith stuff um, because that was kind of a that's quite a niche topic. And that got good traction last time. So we've kind of like revisited that bit from different angles. Yeah, we've got some different different people haven't we yeah i'm really um yeah looking forward to exploring this so yeah not to be a spoiler but i think phil from christian climate action obviously stands out looking forward to sharing his podcast and hearing later in the series hearing kaylee cry that was insane spoken to andrew mellon who was a good guy can i just say though right i did check because i'm not very good with names and i did check and i said to him do i pronounce your surname is it melon and he went yeah i was like okay just checking okay cool (laughs) (laughs) but he was a good guy you know but more from like the political angle bit of a political carryover from there but really really interesting to try and kind of lean into some of the more complicated aspect because of environmentalism rather than just like how do we recycle although having said that the waste episode that's coming up oh that was so good one of my faves do you know what right i think one of the things i love the most is about there's so much variety in this next season that's coming up we've got like episodes where there's like nice banter which definitely the recycling one is i would say top banter on that one and you know then you've got like a more in-depth um not necessarily I was going to say not necessarily serious, but it was serious. The the feel from Climate Christian Action, like that is that is a whole different kind of punch is quite different, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I think we've got we've got both ends of the spectrum, then everything in between. And I think it's quite a nice mix that's coming up, and I'm quite I'm I've, I I'm looking forward to being able to share it. I think before I was a little bit scared to share it because I was like. I don't know how I'm going to come across, but it's leaning into some really unusual spaces, isn't it? Environmental, env- yeah. environmentally. And I think I'm just going to take a bit of a Jackie Weaver vibe from it and just be like, this is, this is us. With it. 
Do you know when I was writing the show notes for um, the waste episode, so I'm sure Stevie and Julia won't mind me saying this, I was trying to remember whether it was on mic or off mic that we had a conversation about whether vegans can poo in their brown bin. <laughs> you remembering this now and I think it was off mic which is the reason why I didn't write it in the show notes <laughs> but we'll have to what? wait until that's released do you not remember this conversation right, I do remember vaguely something but this just goes to show how bad my memory is right now um, I can tell you what I did 20 years ago today <laughs> I cannot tell you what I did before the summer in that episode I can't but I couldn't remember enough to be able to go can I write in the show notes that we find out if vegans can put in their brown bin <laughs> oh it's vaguely coming back to me now i think it is off episode so therefore i probably can fill people in so essentially the reason why you can't compost dog poo because it's got meat in it it had meat in it and there's toxins in the meat but you can if it's vegan oh well, that was the question that we asked was principally could you then if you or your dog ate vegan food <laughs> and then i was trying to remember whether that was recorded <laughs> and is going to go in the show or not. Either way, it's in this episode. Well, but either way, uh, drop a little email into the Medway Council Waste <laughs> Team and um, you know what to put in the subject at the top, don't you? Gosh. I mean, we, we went in. And we went there. Covering all bases. Covering all bases. I mean, it was good. It was a really good episode. And I think that's the thing as well, is that when I've listened back to um, some of the edits, I can really, obviously I know I was there, but I can really feel like I'm back there. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of like feel like you're part of it. I really liked it. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to season two. And, and also I would say one of the things that we really, really enjoy is when we put it out on socials and we get feedback and we get people messaging and we get people people saying like oh I really liked this or or I didn't really like this like either or is really really good and it really helps us kind of, kind of like shape the content that we're creating and also it means that we get to know you a little bit better and understand you know what makes people tick and not because I guess Raynham is Raynham but we're reaching people beyond that now and I feel like it's really good to just kind of work out where where people are at and what they're wanting to learn on and stuff I've got so much learning to do there were like five million things that I would want to learn about I'm doing a um, carbon literacy course right now tell me about your carbon literacy course it I didn't realize that it was a little bit more wordy okay yeah I've got to read a lot of stuff oh really like pre- free the course which I'm going through at the minute what a great thing and, to do but it is really interesting so yeah if um if anyone's done any carbon literacy stuff and they want to share their carbon literacy training with us on a podcast I would love to do that yeah and kind of unpack that get someone on yeah find well, out what it's about if you could like wave a magic wand and be like I would love to do a podcast on this what would you pick gosh what a good question you did mention that you'd love to revisit like vegan uh, veganism yeah i really enjoyed the vegan bingo episode in series one i thought it was really interesting because i think in the space of environmentalism i think it's really we hear people coming on a journey but you also hear similar comments around you know what's the point in me doing my bit if china are building coal fire power stations and i've got something on china in a minute okay but equally like you know what's the point in you know reducing your meat consumption xyz um and I quite liked it because we just had a conversation around the the kind of flippant comments that come and that it can be quite hurtful, but is also quite a good opportunity for having a conversation with the right people. But I think what, I, what I'm keen to learn about more is just how plant-based eating is actually really good for reducing costs, for your health, so many other reasons as well. So to kind of maybe talk about recipes or something like that. Yeah. What about you? I think I would really love to um, learn more about and explore climate injustice. Yeah. On a completely different level. I think I think looking at that from a local level would be really fascinating for me. And I know that I'm putting that at like the forefront of my agenda for like the next year to kind of like... Really nice. Yeah, really focus on that and kind of see where the gaps are. And I've spoken about this, I think, in the Green Drinks episode where I feel like there are lots of people that are missing from this conversation and they're missing because I don't feel like I'm doing my part in including them. And including them means that things need to be accessible. Yeah. And I feel like I want to do work on that. 
I, I think, think that's really I think that's really interesting and important and I, I, one of the things that I would also love to do off the back of what you're saying I don't know whether you feel the same is there are loads of local environmental groups across the country so obviously we've got Gillingham, Chatham, Maidstone, Kings Hill you know loads of kind of environmental groups locally down in Dover there's some great act, action going on how amazing would it be to pull people together who probably have got a community that looks totally different in I don't know, Camden and Fulham have got a big community to Dover, to what it looks like in the heart of Surrey, to what it looks like in a coastal town, to what it looks like. And actually to work out who those people are talking to and how it's working for them and kind of to cross reference kind of what their community looks like. You know, even like I, I saw um, Moss Side in Manchester does amazing things with their back alleys that connect yeah. and they're starting to turn them yeah. into spaces where yeah. they turn them into beautiful gardens instead of places where drug deals happen and attacks happen, which has yeah. been in the past, opened it out, cleared it out. And that's insane because yeah. that's a really deprived area in Manchester that's doing incredible stuff but connecting communities in a space that's so unique to their community. And I think from the back of that, actually, like this is a real personal thing and like a selfish thing, but the things that I have been working on and feel is really, really important is that whole bringing communities together, but that listening piece. Yeah. And it's so important, I think, that we build our communities from the inside out rather than the outside in. Yeah, 100%. And I think that we are nowhere near in Raynham nor in Medway where we need to be with that. And look at examples. There's like a place in Birmingham that I've been um, watching and studying and like looking at and reading about who they're doing some really, really good I don't know if it's like community cohesiveness sort of like workshops and kind of like but they're really getting hands on getting their hands dirty pulling people together and going tell me what it is that you love tell me what it is that you where you want to add value tell me where and like going it from it from a really positive place like that like pulling people together and making spaces look beautiful and look really really nice instead of being like well this is crap and I don't like this and I don't like this like going tell me what you love tell me what's going to bring you joy tell me where you want to put your energy and build on that rather than I think where we've had for such a long time here which like a top-down approach to anything yeah which is like this is what we're doing and this is what you're going to do. It's so disempowering, isn't it? Yeah. Especially when this space is so complicated and complex and difficult to access in amongst everything else that's going on to then have it so kind of hierarchically yeah. led. It's just not going to create change, is it? So so I think if we could like find people that are empowering communities and being able to take like positive action, I think that'd be good for me. I love that. Well, I hope you guys enjoy season two i hope you enjoy hearing from the guests that we've got and some of the topics that we cover but yeah keep sharing keep telling us what you like what you don't like and share it with your mum we think your mum would like our banter a hundred percent and yeah let us know as well if you think that there's somebody who we should be chatting to as well because that was a huge part of season one was people saying i want to tell my story or i think you should chat to this person and thank you for all of those recommendations because the people we've chatted to have been incredible so thank you and keep them coming cheers guys bye that's it for today's episode of the tread lightly podcast we hope you enjoyed the conversation and maybe like Kaylee and myself even picked up a new perspective along the way if you did do not keep it to yourself you need to give us a like rate the podcast and share it with somebody who needs to hear it and of course follow us on all of our social media which is hilarious because we are on linkedin haha tiktok oh my gosh facebook and instagram and you can also stay in the loop for more episodes and updates Thank you so much for listening. And as always, keep treading lightly. This has been an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. For more information, head over to our website, iam-listening.co.uk.